All right, hello, and welcome back to my 2.5D RPG in Unity tutorial. Uh, today, I'm going to recover a couple of things. Uh, first is like pathfinding for NPCs, and the second is sort of the start of me implementing a system for NPCs doing actions. So, say if you want to send them to go somewhere or something, or basically it's like an action system where you'll write a derived sort of action class and then you just plug that into the NPC class and they'll do it. It's, it'll make more sense when I show you the code, but yeah. So first off, I'll just show you that, that we have a little uh, pathfinding thing, uh, pathfinding implemented, so you can see that this NPC is navigating all these rocks and stuff that you can see in the world. And they will it will just keep roaming about the uh, actual world. You see he's got another path, he's going to wherever that is, and you also see that this NPC here, with the brownish shirt, is basically facing towards us and moving towards us. And yeah. So that's all using the uh, action system. And you'll see that we have a little world generated here. Just a quick rudimentary one to display that the pathfinding works. You can see that, yep. And yeah, so let's go see how all this was done. Okay, so first up is we have this action class, which basically I'm going to use these actions to control NPC behavior. So I would say whether you wanted to find cover, to move towards the player, you know, whatever. You put them, you basically write a, derive, a child class of this action class and fill in the behavior. So if you say for following the player, you'd have. Uh, look at player and move towards if within or further than say five units and the reason for doing that is uh is it? sorry uh it's because basically when i've well basically a little anecdote from loud or quiet when i was making it i had all the like sort of behavior in sort of one class which was kind of messy and hard to alter so by having all the different possible NPC actions as their own sort of separate class, and then being able to just plug them into this NPC script I've written, which will then run the action on that specific NPC, it should allow us to have a lot, uh, a wider variety of different actions and make it easier to edit single actions or decide what actions to put in and stuff. And hopefully it'll make a, our AI a lot better a lot better, a lot easier to use and read and understand and all that shit. So yeah. So first off, we've got this action, oh, three methods, sorry. Uh, we've got a virtual void for perform action. Remember, virtual is just means you can override the method in a child class to have different functionality. Uh, we've also got a Boolean to say whether the action is complete or not. And we've got a virtual void for incomplete. So once it's complete, you call this and it does whatever, say adds another action or why not. So yeah. So for the follow, follow player action, uh, we've just added a variable for NPC, which would be my NPC, which we'll get onto in a minute. And we only need the on perform action to override the uh, perform action uh, method because we're not using the on complete just yet. That'll probably come in the next episode. Uh, yeah. So if we check if my NPC is null, then we get that. And we check if we are far enough if we're within the four units of the player then we don't do we just face the player using this uh pathfinding.me.player is well, pathfinding's new class for this episode but basically that's just a static reference to the player's position so we don't have to use find object with tag player every time in each script we just have the one reference to it and everyone can reference that particular reference if that made sense but yeah so basically, this is called every frame, and if we're more than four units away, we call move and face. So we move the NPC and face the direction, uh, face the position of the player, sorry. And if not, we just call the decide direction to face method, which will be on in a minute. Uh, and again, we have another action called roam map. It's basically the same principle. So we've got a list for the path that we want, we found to a random point. Uh, we've got a counter for cycling through the points in a path, and we've got an NPC that we are moving that the action is on. Again, we've got uh, an NPC on. I'll just zoom in, sorry. 
Uh, where is it? Zoom in. So yeah, so we just check for if it's null, and if we do, if it is null, we get the uh, NPC ob scripts off the objects. And then we check if the path is null or the path count is zero. So if we've found, basically because I'm getting paths yeah, using this uh, method to get a random tile in the world, it may be a null one, which is, uh, well, not a null, uh, an unwalkable one, which is shown by the red tiles here. So just in case that happens, we just get another random one. That's it's more of a uh, sort of debugging uh, or for the test for the uh, for the demonstration would be a better way to say. It. So this is more for demo in it that we have uh, the check for it being null because in reality we probably want to make sure that the place we're trying to send the NPC to is not null. Yeah. Uh, okay. So yeah. So we call pathfinding.me.findPath. Uh, with this object and we decide a target. So in this case, we're getting a, just a random tile in this grid of tiles that we've used to build up the world. And we set the path counter to zero. So we, we start, uh, yeah, just in case it isn't already, because that means we can tag through the path again. Uh, okay, next up. Uh, so basically this is, so if we, no shit, sorry. Uh, so if we don't have a path, that bit is called, but if we do, so the path is not null and it's more than zero uh, vector freezing length. So if we are near to the, uh, so if we're in 1.5 uh, units of the position, or the end of the path, sorry, then we basically just call to get another path using that same method, using path and using the game object the script is attached to and a random tile in the grid and we reset the path to zero but if we're not near the end of the path uh we just run a check for whether we are near the current uh vector three in the list that we're trying to go to and if we are we increment the path counter and if we're at the end again we set the path counter to zero and if we're not within 1.5 of the uh thing then we just Use call the npc dot moving face to face the vector three that we're trying to go to and move towards it. So yeah, that was the actions class. All right. So next up, we have the npc class, uh, which was what we referenced in the action script. It basically controls like the direction for the npc to face and moving it and whatnot. And basically, it takes the role of a player controller, the player controller class for the npc. Or basically controls the direction of movement. So we've got uh, basically a human, my human, because again, uh, that the, the human script just controls the, like visuals of the uh, actual human character, whereas this controls just the movement and stuff. And it also has a an action. So this would be the current action that the NPC is executing. So as we saw in the demo thing, it's either following the player or just moving randomly about the map. All right, so basically on update, we check if the current action is null, we don't do anything. Otherwise, if the action is not complete, then we call the perform action method. And that's that. And now we've got the methods for moving and Facing direct different uh, positions or whatnot. Uh, basically, it's similar. It's, it's identical to the uh, method for making the player face different directions. So, but instead of using the mouse coordinates, we use uh, this variable called positive face. So you can pass in like a position in the world. So it might be the player's position, the direction they're going, something like that. And it will use that. Uh, to work out what, uh, like what position and what direction it should be facing, and the sorting nodes and all that. So I won't go over it in too much depth because it's literally copy paste from the uh, player controller script. It's the same logic and everything, except there's one small variation on side movement, which is again just copy paste of it. But instead of uh, calling the myhuman dot set down left, uh, it will just call 
they uh, it will run transform.translate to to move the uh, NPC in that direction. So again, so we got up, down, right and down, right and up, and all that. So yeah, and just for convenience, we also have a method called move and face. So the NPC will face the direction it's moving, just for. So you only have to call one method rather than the two individually. Isn't that good? All right, next up we have a little uh, world builder script. It was more, it's more for the just demonstrating the pathfinding and stuff. So it will probably change a fair bit because I'm not planning to have procedural generation. So yeah, but just for, I'll show you it because we need it for the demo anyway. Uh, first off, static reference to it, just standard really. So we can find it in other scripts without having to use find objects of type. Uh, we've got a couple of, quite a few prefabs here. We've got a blank tile prefab, uh, prefab for the rock, and then the various sort of like edge tiles, because as you can see, not you can see because you're watching this, but whatever. Uh, yeah, you see how like the edge changes. So at the bottom is different to the sides and the top again. So yeah, and again, these will have like different uh, like colliders and whatnot for just making sure that uh, stuff actually collides properly and like gets a little hidden when you pull in front of it and whatnot. So yeah, so here we set the site. Uh, we also have a width and height for the world, which is basically just how much it gets, how many tiles by how many tiles it is. And we've got a 2D game object, game object array for storing these uh, tiles in the world. Uh, yeah, because we need a way to reference it for the pathfinding. Uh, so first off, we initialize the singleton. So we just say me equals this. Uh, for world tiles, we set it to be a new game object's 2D array of the width and height. And we call this create world method. Uh, create world is just uh, two loops. Uh, so for instance, x equals zero to width and for int y equals zero to height or one less because of how array indexes work and zero to width uh, to length minus one. Uh, and what we're doing here basically is we're basically checking where we are in the array. So if we're on, uh, basically these if statements are checking whether we are on the, oh, this, sorry, this checks if we're on the edge or not. So if we meet all these conditions, we're not in the like on the edge of the array, so we can just create a normal tile here. Uh, so we instantiate the tile prefab. at the x, y, and zero, z, uh, x, y, and zero, and the rotation of, of zero, zero, zero. Uh, we then get the world tile off the uh, tile script, off the tile prefab. Sorry, uh, this is basically just the a script that we have attached that stores information for pathfinding and where it is on the grid and if it's walkable or not and you know, all that other shit. Uh, we set the grid X and grid Y values so we know the index of the tile. And then finally we store this the tile game objects we created in the 2D array of game objects we initialized a second ago. Yeah. And then, so if it's not within, if it is on the edge of the uh, at the edge of the grid because we've not met one of these conditions. Uh, we go into this else statement and basically we go through each of the things, each of the uh, values. So if x is equal to zero, that means it's on the left side of the grid and the y is more than zero. So, and y is less than the height minus one. So that suggests that this is just a, a an edge tile on the left hand side of the grid. So we want to instantiate the cliff edge at the X and Y, and we get the tile. We set it to not be walkable because it's a cliff face, you know, you can't walk on it. And we do the same thing for that there. And again, if X equals zero and Y equals zero, uh, we want to instantiate a corner, the bottom corner instead. And I think you get the idea. So basically, based on the x and y coordinates on the grid, uh, where they are in the edge, we will instantiate a different one. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So that's all that is. And now we get on to the second bit of the uh, grid, uh, which is another for loop. So what we're doing is we are going through 
all the uh, tiles in the grid once again. Because once we have all the tiles in the grid, we can then work out uh, what neighbors each tile has, uh, which you will need for the pathfinding. So we get the tile of the game object in the 2D array. And we use this get neighbors method uh, where we pass in the x and y coordinates of the index of the, the array. And we assign that to be a list of game objects in the world tile class called my neighbors. And then finally, uh, we'll basically run this code where if we're not on the edge of uh, within two tiles of the edge of the map, uh, we create a generate a random number. And if this number is less than two, so it's like a one in a hundred chance, we just create a rock and we set like five tiles in a cross. Uh, or, or we set that tile and all uh, all four adjacent tiles to be unworkable. Um, we set them to be red just so we can uh, distinguish them from normal tiles. So I'll just show you that again uh so yeah so as you can see we get a rock and all four adjacent tiles are set as unworkable so yeah that's that uh, that's just to add some uh you know to break up the terrain and give the ai something to navigate around and finally we have these two vector frees which are actually written here rather than with the top of it so i'll just move them uh we have the bottom left corner tile and the top right corner tile. And the top right corner isn't actually used yet, so I'll get back to that. But the bottom left corner is used for when we are calculating, it's basically a more efficient way of working out uh, whereabouts an object is within the grid, because uh, I'll get onto it in a minute, it's in a method, but I'll show you. Uh, basically, so world tile zero zero dot transform dot position is where the bottom left corner is. And the top right is again the world tiles width minus one height minus one and yeah we saw that and basically that allows us if we so if we pass in a position to this method called find nearest world tile uh, so we pass in a position and if we take the uh, position of the bottom left corner tile from that position uh, it, it'll give us roughly uh and it X and Y index for that for the nearest tile, which is much more efficient than say if we had to go through all the tiles and just look for the closest one to the uh, to the object that we're comparing it to. And that is a nice little performance save. So I'll just get rid of that comment that code. And we don't need debug. So yeah. Oops. And that's why we have the bottom left corner stored which is a little trick I learned from when I was making that little tile mapping tool, which is quite fun. Uh, finally, we have a get neighbors method, which basically returns a list of world tile scripts, uh, instances, sorry. Uh, basically, it takes an X and Y for the coordinates of the two axes and index in the array of world tiles. And basically, it checks whereabouts in the grid it is and will add all the adjacent uh, tiles to the grid. So if x is more than zero and less than width minus one, and y is more than zero and less than height minus one, but it'll, it assumes, all right, we're not on an edge, so we can add all adjacent ones. So x plus one, x minus one, y plus one, y minus one. And you know, that's all good. And again, if y is equal to zero, okay, we're on an edge, so we can't have y minus one. So we just have x plus one, x minus one, and y plus one. And that's basically how it works for getting neighbors. And that's just run when the world's created. So we can start. So yeah. Uh, that's pretty much that. So if you just want to, I'll just leave it over there so you can copy it down or not. Cause I'm not going to go through each fucking instance cause it's pretty simple-ish maths. So yeah, that was uh, the world building. Okay. So this is the uh, world tile. Uh, class that is basically just attached to every prefab tile we have. I'll just show you that. Prefabs, prefabs, prefabs. So, yeah, so see the floor tile, we've got a world tile script, and we just set it to minus 13,000 on the sorting order. Uh, just to be sure, I think about the edge scripts are pretty much the same, but they have the collider and the object monitor to allow the player to move around them and whatnot. <coughs> Sorry, it's better than that. 
So yeah, so we've got the G and H costs, which are just used for the pathfinding, which we'll get onto in a second. Uh, we've got the grid X and grid Y, uh, which basically just store the index of this particular tile in the world array in the world, the world builder script. Uh, I've got whether a tile is walkable, so again, for the pathfinding, again, and also neighbours, so if you want to get the neighbours, just a quick reference to it. And we also have the world tile parent, which is again used in the pathfinding and a method. Actually, we don't need these two methods at the moment, so I'll just get rid of them. But we do need the public int fcost, which is basically used in the pathfinding, uh, which basically returns the g cost plus h cost. Which again is not initialized here because it's set when you're searching for a path because the values will vary based on where you're coming from and where you want to go to. And speaking of pathfinding, is I'm not going to cover it in this one. Uh, basically, my reasoning is I've done it before, so if you want to check out my particular one, uh, you can go back to uh, I think the most recent one was the RTS tutorial where I had a version and implementation of A-Star. And also a lot of other people have done it get as better than me as well. So I will leave a link, a couple of links to resources for doing A-Star pathfinding in the description. And I will just like hover over this so you can copy it down or not. There's probably articles and stuff you can read on A-Star pathfinding to get a better understanding it, but I'm just gonna leave it here. So first off, you've got this bit. And then I'll just scroll down. Scroll down again. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So if you need to read all that, just like uh, pause the video and say it to a decent quality so you can actually read it. And yeah, but if anyone's particularly keen for me to go over A Star again, I'll do it in the next episode or something. Well, I didn't think anyone would need that. Uh, this is just a test input class, so it will basically just add the action scripts to the NPCs and start performing it. And yeah, that was pretty much it. Uh, so I'll just give you a quick demo again. So in this episode, we covered pathfinding and uh, like NPC actions. So you can see he's following me. And this one is just roaming about the map and get stuck on stuff because I need to I need to uh, work out a better way to do the sorting order. I'm gonna well at some point I'm gonna be working on a system with uh, layers on the colliders so NPCs won't collide with like environmental stuff to stop them pathfinding, to stop them getting stuck on stuff when they're pathfinding. But bullets will still collide with them or something when combat mechanics are implemented and at the same time uh, bullets will still collide with the environment, so you can't shoot through things and stuff, and they will still navigate around them, but they just won't get stuck on them, and that'll look better. Hopefully. So, yeah. Uh, uh, it might be, I just don't, if you're thinking that it's a bit strange, like the order I'm doing this tutorial in, because I'm just sort of trying to jump straight into the mechanics so we can get like a, a sort of functional, playable prototype of an RPG. Uh, soonish, or as soon as one episode a week can be. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm trying to do because I made the mistake of. Well, I'm just trying to like avoid the mistakes I made while developing Loud or Quiet for these tutorial series, so I can get better as a game developer and whatnot. And hopefully, you'll be able to learn from my mistakes as well. And speaking of Loud or Quiet, uh, yeah, the link will be in the description for it. So go check it out. It's like a demo and a paid version. And I've started the process of getting it on Steam. I've paid the Steam Direct fee. And you might have noticed the trailer's coming up saying November 20th, because that's when I'm aiming to get it released by. So I've got a nice uh, sort of window to get everything set up, maybe add achievements, or they might come later down the line. I'm not sure. But yeah, that's that. Uh, what else? I don't think there's anything else, actually. That's pretty much it. So, yeah. Uh, cheers for watching. If you have any questions, suggestions, stuff like that, uh, just wing me a message and I will answer back. Uh, cheers for watching and goodbye.